First, we want to give a shout out to Barry Habib, who has done a presentation just about how inflation ECE4 is going to be stickier than we all expect for longer, what that may or may not mean for Fed rate cuts. We're also going to talk about what we're hearing from real estate agents. Just this morning, I've, I've spoken to an agent in Austin, Texas, and in Orange County, California. And of course, we've got Matt, the mortgage guy, who covers 48 states with a focus on California. So lots and lots of stuff going on. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing good, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm really, really uh, happy to kind of share a quick chart that Barry Habib uh, put together. Again, full full shout out and acknowledgement to him for creating this. But basically, I think what Barry is trying to communicate in this is that inflation is coming down. It's just going to be a lot slower and take longer than people expect. Is that Was that kind of the message that Barry was giving you? Yeah. And I was listening this morning, you know, we've got a, a new uh, core PC number coming out Friday, the 29th. And so we there's do. some talk around, you know, the, the number that we expect, but then Barry expanded and said, listen, like even with monthly readings of 0.2 for the rest of the year, watch what that does um, to the core inflation number year over year, it doesn't pull us down that much. And so I'll share it so we can all see. Yeah. So, um, so as Matt's bringing this up, what you're basically going to see visually, thanks to Barry's creation, is something what is called the base effect, right? And and we'll get more into that. But why don't you lay this out as Barry did? Right. So, so here's the 2024 estimates. And if we think that uh, February's number that's coming out Friday is going to be 0.3, um, and it's replacing an old number of 0.36, I think current like core PC year over year is like 2.85. So it's mm -hmm. gonna pull Correct. us down to 279. Correct. And then if March's number that's released in April comes out 0.2 and it replaces 0.34, everyone's like, oh my gosh, like that's that's huge. Cause we're because 0.2 on a monthly is 2.4 right. over a year. And that's coming down from 0.34, which yeah, what which does is that more. make that like? Yeah. So <laughs> But then when you look at this, you can visualize that only pulls us down to 265. So we could have monthly readings for the rest of the year at 0.2. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to pull us down, looking all the way down to September to 2.45. So anybody who thinks that like, hey, a couple good readings, inflation's at 2%, the game's over, we're going to start cutting and the party's on. Yeah. That's not that's not what's going to happen. And so- You know what the other, about, here's another scary thing. Right. If you look at this, and that's just assuming we're 0.2 the rest of the way, let's just assume for a minute it's 0.3 the rest of the way. So at 0.3, we actually go right because we're gonna we're gonna fall off five five hundredths, six hundredths, then we're gonna go up and yeah, if we're 0.3, core CPE is higher by the end well, of the year than lower. Yeah, and and you and you can look down to June. Exactly. Um, June, July, August. Exactly. And, and the point twos is, is, is going the other way, right? Because yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's higher than, than last year's June and August readings. And so I think the moral of the story for people that are like, all right, what does this mean for me? Rates, because they're going to be influenced strongly by inflation mm -hmm. are not going to come down nearly as fast as you think, but that's good news. It's good news if you root for a healthy housing market. That's good news if you're a buyer who doesn't want to compete against 44 offers. That's mm -hmm. good news yeah. if um, you know, you're know you looking at this from a long-term perspective, not just what's the rate that I can get next week. But yeah. Um, and and so um I, I thought it was it was cool being a numbers guy. I'm like, this is a, a really yeah. clear way to put it so that people can look at it and go, okay. I get it. I probably shouldn't expect a five and a half in the summer. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, you could stop sharing this. This is really cool. Really, really show the base effect in action. Um, you know, when you look at that, I, you know, I'm, I'm left to wonder if the fed even cuts this year, right? Again, we're making lots of assumptions. I think a 0. 0.2 for the rest of the year is kind of aggressive, right? Am, am I, I wonder what the math would look like if it was 0. 0.2 and a half, right? 25 basis points. I wonder what that would look like. So, um, yeah, that's inflation probably, is probably, sticky. Yeah, it it probably you know 
279 to 245 with the 0. 0.2, it probably stays around where it's at exactly. now. Exactly. 0.25. And what what one thing that came to mind, Mike, that I wanted to mention is I think with with this information, you know, not all consumers honestly care about this, but my gut feeling for consumer sentiment, because the most research I do is like this. I'm right. not digging into numbers and reading reports. My consumer sentiment readings are what am I hearing on the other end of the phone? Because I'm talking to Correct. consumers every day, realtors every day. Consumers are used to higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. They want to buy homes. And yeah. whether rates are going to be lower in six months, 12 months, 24 or 36, honestly, Mike, I don't, I don't think people care anymore. I don't think they care. I think they've given up. The consumer is a predictable creature. They just are. I've been studying the consumer for 30 years. And it really boils down to two things that drive consumer behavior. One, do they feel like they're getting a deal? Two, are they pissed off? And right now, we're seeing more and more home buyers feel like they're getting a deal. Six is better than seven. And unfortunately, and this is this could be a big problem. If we get a lot of consumers coming off the sidelines that are pissed off because they've been shopping for two years and they're still getting outbid, that pissed up buyer could make some very bad financial decisions and start overpaying just to get something. That's like a legit concern I have Yeah, is well, rates come down, buyer demand comes out, bidding wars go back to nonsense, and then we get the dreaded double catastrophe of Buyers doing stupid things. Right. Uh, some good news for you from, from, from my front and my conversations. I think consumers are smarter than ever. And sure. there's, there's going to, well, I, and I'm being <laughs> honest, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, Mike. I, and maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Cause I talk to people that follow one rental at a time, but yeah, maybe this, this uh, is a true, this is a true funny. story. This is a true story. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> stop laughing, Mike. God damn it. This is serious business. Um, I, I think that there's edge cases and I'm like, holy shit, that person bid 250 over on that property in yeah. San Jose or whatever the case may be. For the most part, I've got buyers that are motivated to buy. They're qualified yeah. to buy. They're not worried about interest rates anymore, but they will refuse to just go out there and bid any price on any property. Oh, I agree. I agree. I, so let me be clear. We're in an okay place today. We are. My fear is rates go from six nine to six and a half, six four. Then the buyers click from, oh, this. Not only am I getting a great deal, but now I'm getting an amazing deal because it used to be eight. Now we gotta buy. Like, I've been in rooms where couples. One of the couples says, "We gotta buy now, no matter what." I mean, Jonathan Twomley talks about a story when his wife was eight months pregnant. He had to buy. Right. I mean, if we get to a point where people feel like they have to buy because it's a deal and there's nothing there. That's the problem I see. I'm not saying we're there now. I'm just saying, I'm not even saying it's probable. I'm just saying it's a risk. Right. That we could get that unhealthy, you know, animal spirits going again. And hey, I don't want to see it. I don't want anybody to misunderstand, but it is a, it's a possibility. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's the thing too, is that, you know, even the best of us are, are susceptible to, to buying into the hype or getting caught up in, in some. Yes. You know, I, I call it being pissed off. They're just, they, they get mad. They're like, you've seen it. You, you, you used to play poker. You get that guy on tilt. All rationale goes out. They just push all in with, you know, three, four, you know, three, four offsuit or something stupid. Just cause I've got, I've got to make a piece of content that says home buyers on tilt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it could come and, and I've, I've seen it. I've seen home buyers go on tilt. And if, if enough people go on tilt, that creates a unhealthy bubble that will pop. We're not there yet. It's just, it could become. I agree. And that's why when we look at the chart and we say inflation coming down slower than we'd like, rates coming down slower than most people would wish for, good thing. Because when they come down slower, we avoid the 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 hype and hysteria that comes with a six and a half, a six and a quarter, um, because I mean, let, sure let's just play this out. Let me just say for whatever reason, the fed cuts tomorrow. And then the market thinks 
uh, that more cuts are coming. And we have the spread come in and bingo bango rates are five nine nine on Friday, you know, two days from now. What the hell do you think happens? Pandemonium. Pandemonium. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I, I I know with absolute certainty there's just massive amounts of home buyers on the sidelines, ready to buy, eager to buy. Um and I just them- don't I don't know where that number is. You know, it's not at six nine. We have evidence. It's not pandemonium today. We both expect it to happen at five nine. So there's some number between those two where buyers go on tilt. And that's the concern I have. Yeah. I, I think if I if if you were to ask me to kind of put, you know, some numbers around how how we could slowly go down, yeah. it would be like we can't go down more than a percent over a calendar year. So oh, I, would, okay. if, I like, I like, like that over a year, yeah. points a month. Right. That, and, and that would so, be okay. Yeah. Over a quarter, we can go down a quarter of an interest rate, but if we do more than that yeah. and, and, and you've said it, and I know plenty of people out there, um, the direction of rates mm-hmm. six, nine to six, eight, five, that in itself creates like, Oh my gosh, they're lower. Mm-hmm. It, it, it kind of ruffles enough feathers of buyers yeah. to go, okay, now I'm going to look. Yeah. As long as it's slow, time. that's the key. Like if it took us a year to go down hundred basis points, which you're right, it's eight basis points a month, you know, it's 0. 0.96. I'm okay with that. It's the, it's the quick, it's the sudden, it's the fed cuts. The market expects more, the margin or the spread collapses all in the same week. Scary. Right. Yeah. And that's why I think, you know, for, for all the flack that we give the fed for bad decisions and whatnot, like Mm -hmm. they rightly so aren't overreacting to one inflation any one number yeah, or two, right. It's like, hold on, let's wait, let's see what happens. And so, um, yeah, give Jay Powell some cred. Um, well, yeah, I I do applaud him because I think he's trying to break the fed put. I think that's, you know, if you were to give him true serum, what he's trying to do is he's trying to break something that's been around since Greenspan. Every time the market tanks, it, they just lower rates and it bails out the wrong people. So um, I think that's what he's going after. So, yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, I am seeing. So I talked to a couple agents. Uh, so Austin, Texas this morning, Danielle basically said March sales are way behind February, which I thought was interesting. I talked to Adrian in Orange County, and it's interesting. Orange County is actually four closings above February already. And they've got, what, three or four more days to go. So. It's very interesting. Texas behind, at least Austin's behind, but Orange County's ahead. So I don't know what you're seeing. Well, yeah, you know what? I don't have any numbers. All I have is the context of of my personal business and, and conversations. My guess would be, you know, Sacramento and some of these markets would be up February to March. Mm-hmm. And it would make a lot of sense to me based on conversations I'm having nationwide if, you know, California was really slow. Mm-hmm. And so if California's numbers were trending up while Florida, Texas, and some of these other markets that were just overheated, red hot, yeah, started to slow down, that that would make sense to me for sure. Yeah, I think, and I think that's where we are. At the end of the day, I'm hearing more and more evidence that rates matter. Everybody slowed down over seven, everybody's speeding up sub seven. We are in the spring selling season. I think it's going to be really interesting three weeks from now when I go look at Alto's research or Housing Wire or Resi Club and see what's going on with inventory because inventory has been building the last five weeks, but that's when rates were rising. Now that rates have rolled over, it'll be very interesting to see if, if uh, absorption is faster and we actually see the uh, uh, actives fall. So that's what I'll be watching over the next two to three weeks. Yeah. I, I think absorption is going to be faster. So my hope is that a lot of folks that I heard were kind of waiting. No, oh, I'm going to list in April. I'm going to list in May. I hope a lot of inventory comes because I think absorption, you know, people are already having the conversations. We forget sometimes about how seasonal it is. Mm-hmm. I don't want to kids pull my kids out of school. Yeah, we're going to close mid-April, but we're going to stay in the old house until May yeah. 15th. Because, you know, that yep. is 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 something that that is quite common, that mm-hmm. a lot of moving in the summertime. And so, you know, we've got a lot of buyer demand as it is. And then a lot of buyer demand that wants to move during a certain time, um, they're going to eat up 
whatever available inventory we have. I, I, I don't think there's any world where, you know, inventory is going to build at any sort of pace. Rapid with pace. With the amount of demand that's sitting there. So. Very cool. Well, you're amazing. If somebody wanted to reach out, get pre-qualified, get a comparison, see what's what in mortgage, where do we send them? Greatmortgagebroker.com. Fill out that quick form. My team will be in touch. I promise. Greatmortgagebroker.com. Thank you, buddy.